Hello there, this is my um, first clip on um, inflation. And I'm going to probably make a couple clips on this because this is a very important topic. It has lots and lots and lots of implications uh, that need to be covered. So this is clip number one. So here, first of all, let me just go over my script that I've written, my sort of basic outline of what this clip series is going to cover. And this corresponds to chapter two in your textbook, uh, this one, <laughs> pages uh, 45 to 47. So basically, what do I want to do? Well, first I want to talk about some key terms. So just very, very briefly, I want to just rant, list off the terms which I'm going to cover, which are the price level, the rate of inflation, okay, and sort of making the distinction between a, what, what they mean by a price level and versus some sort of rate of inflation. A, a basic way of measuring the price level, which would be the consumer price index or CPI, okay. Then I want to make sort of again uh, a very clear the distinction between nominal versus real. Uh, measures. And in particular, I want to talk about this idea of purchasing power of money or the real value of money. Then I also want to define quickly um, the idea of a store of value and a medium of exchange. Now, I actually covered this topic in chapter 18 because I'm not, I'm not taping this in order. I actually taped chapter 18 before I taped chapter 2. Uh, so you can jump ahead, uh, no, nothing wrong with that, where I go into this. And your textbook does as well, uh, it's in chapter 18 of your textbook, where it talks about um, the three major functions of money, which I tell you to remember by using the mnemonic device Maryland State University or Michigan State University or whatever state starts with M, Montana State University, right? Medium of exchange, store of value, and unit of account. Okay, and then I, go talk, I want to talk uh, about the term called hyperinflation. Now, hyperinflation is what happens basically when you have very high inflation. That's hyper, right? And inflation, hyperinflation. So very high inflation. It's basically when money loses these functions, when it loses the function of being a store of value and a medium of exchange. Okay, so it's basically the opposite of what money is supposed to be, right? Money is supposed to be a store of value. It's supposed to be a medium of exchange. So this is when it, money loses those functions. We get this, it happens in this hyperinflationary world. Then I want to find the term debt monetization, which I think is an important term. You need to know it. Okay, so that's going to be the terms I'm going to cover um, momentarily. So that's agenda item number one. Okay, agenda item number two is to go into the consumer price index in more depth. I want to sort of give you a numerical example, walk you through the calculations. So you can see sort of in a simplistic world where there's going to be like three goods or something with imaginary prices, um, how a consumer price index is calculated and then out of that how it, an inflation rate would be calculated. This is important because um, the government statistics are based on these price indexes so that you understand what this index number means. So what does a CPI of 173 mean, right? Because they're just going to throw you a number. So you can interpret it and make some sort of meaning out of it. What is it telling you? What is it signaling to you? Then I want to talk a little bit about the history of hyperinflation. Um, yeah, so basically I'm going to be getting most of that from three different books, which I will put the information in the credits uh, after um, this is uh, done. Um, the first, of course, is the Lipsy Reagan Courant book, which was my introductory textbook when I was a freshman back in 1999, for goodness sakes up at good old York University. Um, I also, if 
um, got this book, which I'm using. It's called Macroeconomics. Okay, by Blanchard Molino. I just looked into that. That was when I was a second year student, when I was a sophomore at York. So it also talks about the history of inflation and of course the uh, or hyperinflation uh, in particular, which is very interesting and very bad. And of course the classic example of hyperinflation was in the early 1920s in Germany. So to look up that, I got a history book on the history of Germany and in particular it's this book called The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich which is written by this guy William Shearer and this is the classic history book on uh, this period of world history as some of his uh, people in the back of his book wrote comments about it. So anyway, this book talks about the history of and the, from the rise of, of Adolf Hitler. And, um, you know, so, so he does talk a bit about this um, collapse in the German economy and how it sort of instigated certain uh, elements of uh, political unrest in Germany. So I thought I'd look at it also from a historical perspective. So I'll look at this issue from an economic perspective from a, a business perspective obviously and also from a historical perspective because there's a lot of uh, government issues in here. I mean basically Blanchard and Molino propose a simple model of what causes hyperinflation um, sort of a uh, caused by growth of money uh, and that of course is caused by government governments getting themselves into budgetary uh, problems Okay, so that's going to be the story, and we'll look at that as well. Okay, so I um, that's that's the plan, and uh, so first terms, um, then the CPI in depth, then the history of hyperinflation. Oh, and then finally, the last thing I want to cover on my agenda is some of the current events um, that that signal the possibility that the world is sort of on the brink of going to some sort of a hyperinflationary uh, recession. There, there is that hypothesis out there and um, as one interpretation of what's going on in the current uh, world. So I want to uh, at least touch upon that as a very practical because obviously that affects everything in your life. Um, hyperinflation, I mean, this is one of the things that really does affect your life. I mean, basically the story that we'll see that in the uh, Germany, uh, as an example, was, you know, it wipes out the middle class and the poor people, just destroys savings. So, it, the, you know, the, uh, this is not something to uh, sneeze at. This is a very serious issue. Um, I mean, it, as you'll see, it has lots of political implications as well. So we've got politics, business, economics, and history all wrapped up in one. So that's, uh, that's going to be exciting. Okay, so on to the next clip, which will begin section one of my uh, agenda, which is the definitions of key terms.